past week, Pittsburgh said goodbye to one of its most popular and memorable political leaders, former Mayor Sophie Masloff, who died at the age of 96 one week ago today. On the occasion of her 90th birthday, I had the opportunity to sit down with former Mayor Masloff as she reflected on her fascinating political career and the beginnings of her life in Pittsburgh's Hill District. We're pleased to share with you just a portion of that interview. Happy birthday, Sophie. Thank you very much, John. I, uh, I've been denying my birthday for so many years. I didn't want it made public, but I can't help it. <laughs> now, you said uh, that you lied about your age in the past. Why would you do that? Well, when I became involved in politics, the voting age had to be 21, and I was only 18. But I wanted to be a committee woman in my district, and I wanted to participate with the late Governor Lawrence, and so I said that I was 21. From then on, I was two years older than I was on my record everywhere I went. When I finally came to tell them that I was really three years younger, nobody believed me. <laughs> well, we believe you now. And you have to now, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let me ask you, you, you've had such a wonderful history here in the city of Pittsburgh. You were born in the city of Pittsburgh, but I read one account where you didn't speak English at home at first. That's exactly right. My mother was an immigrant never spoke a word of English. My father died when I was two, and there were four kids, and my mother had to make a living for us. But we spoke Yiddish in the house all the time until I went to kindergarten. So you learned English at school? Yes. What got you into politics? Many things. Um, the first inclination was uh, Mrs. Roosevelt came here to dedicate Bedford Dwellings. And that was the first public housing project in the country. 1930s sometime? Uh-huh, about 36 or so. And I was in high school, and I went to, up to see, listen to the dedication, and I was so impressed, and I thought, I've got to get involved. So then I went to Democratic headquarters, and Governor Lawrence was then the head of the party, and the party was predominantly Republican in Allegheny County in those days, and he was a Democratic chairman in a tiny little office in the Benedict Trees Building. And I went there as a volunteer for many years and got to know each office holder as they came along in the whole Democratic Party, so that by the time I was 21, I knew everybody who was running for every office. <laughs> Who's your favorite president? Well, I've been to every national convention as a delegate since 1960, and I met them all. And I came to like them all, but nobody will beat Harry Truman. I met him, I don't remember where the city that the convention was in that year, but I met him personally. Such a homegrown guy and so, so wonderful. I never lost my faith in him. And of course, uh you were working in city government or county government, I guess, when he was president of the United States. Yes, yes. And then he came to Pittsburgh. And you know the famous expression, what's a prothonotary? That was his first question. They introduced him to Dave Roberts and, uh, as a prothonotary. And of course, it's his famous expression now. In Pittsburgh, people say, what do he say? What is a prothonotary? And, uh, I thought I, he was a little more flamboyant than just what's the prothonotary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, of course. <laughs> He was, a, he, was a real, he was my kind of a guy. He was down to earth, and he spoke the language of the people, really and truly, and I loved him. And in my experience, I saw many important things happen, and in five years, they're forgotten. I remember when they rerouted Grant Street around the William Penn Hotel, there was a statue there uh, of Mayor McGee, who was a prominent mayor early on. I think he was a Republican. And, and they rerouted Grant Street, and to this day, his family is looking for that statue. <laughs> so that, uh, you know, in five or ten years from now, everybody will forget, and that's just as well. No, it's not just as well. You have become an institution in the city of Pittsburgh. Well, thank you. And you know it. I mean, we, everybody, there's nobody who says a bad word about Sophie Masloff. Well, how nice of you to say that, John. I well, appreciate that. Well, it's true, and uh, really, on behalf of everyone in the city of Pittsburgh, all your admirers, happy birthday to you. Thank you, John. Thank you very much, and I wish the best for you and your family. Quite a lady. Well, it was in 1994 when Mayor Sophie Masloff decided to retire, although that was just from being mayor of Pittsburgh. She still played an important role in lots of things in the community for many years to come. In 1994, KDKA's Dave Crawley wrote this tribute to Sophie Masloff on her retirement. 
we wanted to share, with you, to share it with you again 20 years later as a fitting celebration of her life. It's a small show with a short run. Ah, oh, but Sophie, you sure had fun. So tip your top hat to all of that, now that the cheering's done. You're everyone's grandma, willing to share. Unusual trait to find in a mayor. When problems arose, you stepped in with both feet. I've got to admit, your plans were concrete. But still, the job must have taken its toll when city council got out of control. Pushing your programs, you hammered away. Practically 18 hours a day. Improving your city, you pitched in with pride. An expert. <laughs> I moonlight. I paint on a side. Remember that ride in a stretch limousine the night you made the Hollywood scene? Awaiting the talk show, we knew you could make it. I'm very calm, and I'm ready to take it. Poor old Pat Sajak. How could he know your tenure as mayor would outlast his show? On a day when the cup of Lord Stanley ascends, who else but Sophie could upstage the pens? When it came to pronouncements, you were no jack straw. Recall your remark on the Big Apple boss? He's not the Big Apple, he's the Big Apple sauce. So you sent him a map, though I've got to agree. A map of this city has never helped me. I ain't gonna go. Jam can! <laughs> we'll miss that voice and the mishaps it renders. Remember Bruce Bedspring and all those dead enders? When it came to the mayor biz, you were a sensation. You're long overdue for a big celebration, but one final word before popping that cork. That's Sophie, time. why don't you come to New York? At the Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales Event, you'll discover why we pursue groundbreaking advances in safety. Lease the 2014 ES350 for $349 a month for 27 months, and we'll make your first month's payment. See your Lexus dealer. I went for one of those buy one room, get additional rooms, free flooring deals. Never again. The installation failed. I have to replace everything after only two years. I should have called Molino. Are you experiencing knee pain when you walk or climb stairs? If pain medication is not effective, you might want to consider the benefits of cold laser therapy at Discover Wellness Center. Cold laser therapy is leading the way in pain management and tissue repair with treatments that are both safe and effective. I'm Dr. Ram Parikh. Find out more about cold laser therapy at coldlaserpittsburgh.com. Call 724-284-1111 today and you'll receive an exam and x-ray for only $25. The KDKA Mobile Weather Lab. It's a three and a half ton game changer in how we do weather. It's the most advanced weather tracking system on the planet. The KDKA Mobile Weather Lab, powered by your Western Pennsylvania Chevy dealers. The Steelers Nation knows why the Pittsburgh Steelers have won six championships. It's called Focus. At PNC, we've been focused on our clients for over 160 years. By keeping our customers at the forefront of everything we do, we give sound financial guidance and provide progressive solutions like our virtual wallet product. I'm Cy Holzer, president of PNC Bank in Pittsburgh, and I'm proud that we are the official bank of the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know what's better than saying thank you? Saying it with a great offer. So McDonald's would like to say thank you, incredibly awesome customer, for your incredible awesomeness with this. Now get a 20-piece Chicken McNuggets for a mere $3.99. So you can dip them, dunk them, and share them. Or even pair them with our world-famous fries. That's a 20-piece Chicken McNuggets, now just $3.99. Just because you're awesome. There's something for everyone to love at McDonald's. At the Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales Event, you'll discover why 85% of luxury hybrids on the road today are Lexus hybrids. Lease the 2014 CT200H for $299 a month for 27 months, and we'll make your first month's payment. See your Lexus dealer. Welcome back to the Sunday Business Page. I hope you enjoyed seeing those clips of Mayor Maslow. Her greatest legacy, nobody has a nasty word to say about her. That's pretty good for a politician. We won't see the likes of her again. Rest in peace, Mayor Sophie Maslow, and thank you. 
If you have a question or a comment or a suggestion, perhaps for a guest or a topic for this program, we'd love to hear from you. So please do write to me at the Sunday Business page, KDKA-TV, One Gateway Center, Pittsburgh, 15222. Or send me an email at kdka.com. And you can now watch the broadcast online at kdka.com slash Sunday Business page. We'll be back again next Sunday morning at 6.30 a.m. I'm John Delano. Have a great weekend, everybody. the Salvation Army from the airport. Instead of packing up, they got Marty. Tomorrow at 6. Don't miss NCIS. CBS Tuesday, 8, 7 Central. When you see this symbol, you know you're watching a show that's educational and informational. The CBS Dream Team. It's epic. Today on Lucky Dog, Brandon rescues Evan, a big dog with an equally large personality. Can we start training now? He's exactly what this healing family is looking for. But will Evan's need for big surprises ruin his big opportunity? Hey, come here. None of that. Come on. Well, that answers that question. I'm Brandon McMillan, and I've dedicated my life to saving the lonely, unwanted dogs that are living without hope. My mission? is to make sure these amazing animals find a purpose, a family, and a place to call home. Today, one dog will be saved, and one family will have a new best friend. This is Lucky Dog. Stay. Brandon works with all kinds of dogs. Stay. Some at the ranch, while others require house calls. Same thing, just open it all the way and say stay. Stay. Today, Brandon takes actress Terry Polo and her daughter Bailey through a door dashing lesson with their terrier, Schrader. So say stay right away. Stay. Now peek around the door. Stay. Stay. Good. So go ahead and practice this every single day until next weekend, then I'll see you then, see how you did. You Thank promise, you. Bailey? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll see you next weekend. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, see you next weekend. But it appears he'll be making one more stop. The West LA Shelter just contacted me and they said they have a black lab mix that the owner surrendered quite a while ago now. This guy's been overlooked time and again and his time is running out, so I'm gonna go down there and rescue him and, and see if I can find him a good home. But Evan, a four-year-old black lab, seems to be taking it all in stride. With his perpetually wagging tail, nothing can dampen the spirits of this happy-go-lucky pup. Hi there. Hey. I know it's cold in there, huh? Come on, you want to get out? Hold on. Evan's disposition makes him a perfect family dog, especially for a healing family like the Serax. After weathering a recent divorce, Kelly and her three kids, Valentina, Luca, and Lila, are looking for their own ray of sunshine. It would just enrich my life, their life, and I feel that's the greatest gift I can give them. But no member of the family is more excited than the Serac Shih Tzu, Bentley. I love dogs, and they're my favorite animal, and Bentley is so lonely, and I want him to have a friend to, like, play with him and stuff. But Kelly and the kids are looking to make a bigger change. We did not want another small dog. My kids need someone like a dog that's more active. I'm going to walk him around the park and play fetch with him at the beach. I'm really excited to get a big dog because Bentley doesn't like to do walks like that. As the Serax look forward to their new beginning. Come here, I got something for you. So does Evan. Try this on. There, perfect fit. Welcome to the Lucky Dog Ranch. Come on, let's go meet the pack. Come on, gang. You don't want to say hi? We got a new guy here. Hold on, Evan, hold on. Hold on, let me unclip you. There, go play. Welcome to Lucky Dog Ranch. Evan takes no time fitting in with the pack. 
Go get him. Oh, there you go. Scratch the back. I know, it feels good, huh? But after lunch, it's time to get down to business. First up, evaluating Evan's knowledge of the seven common commands. Seven common commands are sit, stay, down, come, off, heel, and no. He's four years old, so there's probably a good chance he knows at least a few of them. You might know a sit, huh? Uh, uh, uh. Can you stay? Can you stay? Uh, 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 uh. How about a stay? Good, good, good. Can you sit? Good. Can you go down? My initial assessment of Evan is he's had some training, but not much. And whatever it was trained on him, it wasn't that good. But there's one command that quickly turns problematic. Come. You have a come? Come here. Good, good, good. Yeah. Was that a real come, or was that just a catch me if you can come? Huh? He likes to play the catch me if you can game, which is very annoying, especially with a big dog. That's where you call a dog to come to you, and they come to you almost. They get within about a two or three feet of you, and they just run away. Yeah. Playing the catch me if you can game. If Evan is going to a family with three young kids, this is a habit he'll definitely need to break. The way I train this is actually very simple. Number one, I put a leash on them. That's the number one rule with this whole training process. Now, I slightly switch the whole game on them a little bit. Evan, come here. Instead of holding the treat in his hand, Brandon says come, then drops the treat on the ground. Good, all the way to me. As they come to me, they're just going to pick the treat up off the ground. I simply grab the leash, pull them into me, praise them, tell them what a good job they did. Evan, 